Thank you, Zimbabwe, for tuning into yet another informative edition of your program. This is Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness, and I am Wadzanai. So this is a platform which was specifically created for our farming community here in Zimbabwe and the various stakeholders that participate in the agricultural industry of Zimbabwe as we pave way towards achieving Vision 2030 as a country where we are talking about becoming an upper middle class economy by year 2030. Now, if you look at Sustainable Agenda Vision 2030 United Nations, we we have sustainable development goal one and two talking of poverty alleviation and eradication of hunger now in this very episode we are going to be talking of the farming business environment to discuss this and more i am joined by the secretary general of the zimbabwe farmers union mr paul zagaria mr zagaria thank you for joining us today thank you very much as i have alluded to earlier this discussion is anchored on the farming business environment at this time, we are looking at those farmers who took part in the 2020-2021 cropping season. They are harvesting their tobacco, they are selling grain, and we are want to look at the developments in the agriculture industry, focusing on the... Recently, there was the launch of the land bank. We have the rehabilitation of irrigation schemes around Zimbabwe. Can you maybe take us through those developments and how they are going to enhance productivity, given that you represent farmers in Zimbabwe? Well, thank you very much, uh, Watanai. Um, talking about the launching of the uh, land bank in Zimbabwe, a very important step actually, uh, when you look at it with the, this in mind, that uh, we had adjustments that were made in terms of access to agricultural land, uh, which we then popularly uh, coded the land reform program. Now with that, we distributed land, but then we need now to focus on the agrarian part or side of it, where we then say, uh, can we encourage production and productivity so that we create abundance and then these factors begin to work for us from an economic point of view. So access to finance is one such critical element to the agrarian reform. Now, when you look at it, you say, uh, back in the years before uh, AFC was folded and then transformed into Agribank, uh, even smallholder farmers had access to finance. In their small groups, they could actually uh, borrow. These were called group lending schemes. And um, they would pay back. Yeah? And they also had to, they secured their loans in a very normal economic environment. And this is the way to go. And now also for the small scale commercial farms and the large scale commercial farms, for medium to long term borrowings uh, for their infrastructure on the farms, for the equipment on the farms, they had a very good window through which they could actually uh, borrow and pay over a period of time. So this is where we are going back to. And as, a, as the farming community, this is a very, very important uh, development and we only hope that uh, the capitalization levels will be such that everybody who cares to produce on the farms will be able to access the resources. Okay, now talking about this 2020-2021 uh, tobacco marketing season, I feel the excitement in the air. Our farmers are selling their produce, they are repaying their debts. Uh, the financiers are collecting their loans, loan repayment. Let us talk about this marketing season. What is your sentiments on it? Well, the marketing season uh, kicked in. And uh, of course, with the issues to do with COVID, we, 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 should, not, uh, we should be mindful of uh, the, the adjustments that had to come because of the health concerns. Um, like we were talking to some colleagues, uh, the, 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 the decentralization of the marketing platforms has come in, has been forced actually into place by, by COVID because in the past there was resistance from the uh, flaws to decentralize because of the cost element. Yes. But uh, now COVID has just forced that to happen. Now we see that uh, there is, uh, you know, there are flaws that have uh, opened elsewhere and also the contractors have come in uh, on board and uh, much of the crop is going through uh, the contract arrangements and uh, only about 10% or less is coming through uh, the, the auction floors. So, but uh, there has been a bit of uh, improvement 
as we speak today compared to many other you know, years in the past where there was congestion, there were many complaints about delays you know, in delivery, delays in payments, uh, complaints about uh, things not being captured properly. There has been a level of improvement, particularly this, uh, this season. Not to say that there are no complaints, but at least when you look at the logistics, how things are running, there has been a marked improvement. Okay, thank you so much, Say. And speaking of complaints, I understand that uh, at times our farmers uh, out there in uh, the rural areas or our small scale farmers, they might have challenges interpreting the voucher, mm. looking at it, understanding what it means, or even just reading what is uh, written there. They might have challenges, but then at the end of the day, when they go back home, it say, this is what I worked for. It doesn't make sense as to compare to the debt that I had. They just uh, took their $1,000. I am left with such an amount. It doesn't make sense. There might be double deductions at times. Let us talk about the importance of proper articulation and interpretation of the voucher after selling. Mm -hmm. Now, that's very important. The actual work would have happened at, at the farm. Yes. <laughs> So yes. the, the, the market does not you know, spring up surprises or does not improve your, your, your quality yes. or even the volumes. So the work would have happened at the farm. But now what happens is when one gets to the floors, they are actually selling. There is uh, the receiving of the bales and then the issuing of the sales tickets. Now, eventually when the sale has been concluded, there is a voucher that is given to the farm. Yes. Now, the two, the sales ticket and the voucher, need to be compared. So the farmer must look at these two to see in terms of classification and value, is it the, are the two speaking to each other in that sense? And then the other thing, the two, these two must tally. <laughs> and then when you look at the stop, stop orders, for instance, exactly. there are many stop orders, right, that our farmers sign off, and promise that you know uh, when I when I eventually sell, then uh, you get paid. Now, farmer must have consented to some or to more. In fact, to all of, of, the, the, stop of the stop orders, so that uh, money is not deducted when a farmer has not consented. So there are many complaints that we receive as a farmers organization, where farmers come to us and they say, so and so deducted so much money and, and I, I have no arrangement them. with yes. them. Yeah? And that is a point of, I mean, we really worry about that. Then we say, then how did this uh, stop order sneak in there? So these are things that a farmer should look out for. And also the amounts, you want to check on the amounts, the correctness of the amounts themselves that have been deducted and the amounts that have been paid to you and the difference that you are supposed to retain. Thank you so much, Say. There you had it, viewers. We are talking of proper articulation and interpretation of the sales watcher after selling your tobacco. On that note, we are going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the second segment. Do not go anywhere. Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness. We are talking of the farming business environment, and I am here today with the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Farmers Union, Mr. Paul Zagaria. Now, Zimbabwe, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with me, the producer, Wazanae Manyore, on 0772-807-506. Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wazanae. Leave your comments and suggestions on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness with Wazanae. We are also now available on Twitter, and our Twitter handle there is at Agribusiness. 110. Now, earlier on, before we went to the break, we we're talking of interpretation of the voucher to our local farmers here. Because at the end of season, we have issues arising, and we have some of our farmers approaching the Zimbabwe Farmers Union talking of being shortchanged the deductions that would have taken place that are not properly explained. We urge our farmers and encourage them to take heed to this advice and interpret their vouchers properly or seek advice or help uh, during this season. Moving right along, Mr. Zakaria, I would like us to talk about the season that we are in. 
Most of our farmers are harvesting and selling. Those that took part in the summer cropping season of 2020-2021, they are getting proceeds. Your advice, financial advice to them, given that farming is a business. No doubt, uh, this is a very good year in terms of harvest compared to uh, uh, the, 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 the recent past. And um, it is important that our farmers begin also to appreciate what they have on their hands. And here we are talking about uh, managing their post-harvest uh, you know, post lo losses. One needs to make sure that we cut back on these losses as much as we can. So the handling of it is definitely going to be an issue. Um, we have seen in the past that uh, over 30 to 40 percent of the harvest is lost purely you know, because of poor handling and poor storage. Yes. So it is very critical that uh, we don't begin to eat into our profits by being careless uh, with the produce. And secondly, we need to adhere to those good agricultural practices. We need to respect our harvest. We should talk to the harvest and the harvest should speak back to us. In other words, there has to be a good relationship there because this is where the money, the journey that the money travels begin, you know, into our pockets. So it is very important that we relate with the harvest. And in this, for those crops that are outside uh, the contract arrangements, one needs to be equipped with market information. Who is buying what where? And mind you, I said outside contracted crops. We need to, uh, we need to respect contracts. If you were contracted to deliver a certain amount or a whole crop to X market, you deliver there. And that is pure business. Yes. So we need to be very careful. Outside contracted uh, contract arrangements, market information plays a key role. You need to know who is buying what, where, what are the prices, and what are the terms uh, and conditions, and how do they pay. So this is very critical so that you are also not losing your good harvest to someone who will not be able to pay. Yeah. Or you are just targeting just one buyer without comparing what is available on the markets. And I would also urge our farmers to avoid as much as is possible, where of course it is uh, really possible, to avoid middlemen. Let us avoid the middlemen, let's go to the final market because the middleman is basically taking the produce from us to a market which is established somewhere. Even if it means that we pull our, our produce together so that we have the volume that convinces the market to you know, come and pick from our farm gate to the market so that we access the real value of our crop. It is very important that we do so. Mindful also of the fact that middlemen will always have a role to play. A rent seekers. Exactly. So we, we, we respect them, but we also want to make sure that we get as much, as most as we, you know, of, of the value as we can out of the produce, that uh, uh, out of our harvest. And then lastly, uh, it is important that our farmers think ahead. When you are marketing your produce, that's the time when you should be thinking about uh, buying, purchasing your inputs for the coming season. Farmers need to respect contracts because that is the essence of any business. You need to respect your contractual agreements and own up to them. Now let us talk about uh, side marketing and its effect on the agricultural industry and the economy as a whole. Side marketing has an effect here of um, destroying a very good avenue one would have had to access finance. If trust is lost, the whole deal is gone. Yes. It's as simple as that. So it's a huge, side, side marketing is a huge threat to our funding arrangements. So if we do not repay, the contractor will uh, have lost faith and definitely they will not come back again and contract the same people until we cure the disease, which is side marketing. So side marketing is about discipline, 
is about understanding contracts and the implications you know thereof it is very critical that we look at that and also it's a threat it is a threat to our own growth as farmers as an industry as an economy yeah because what we have lost what a contractor has lost through side marketing will cost everybody in the value chain Thank you so much, Say. There you had it, viewers. Good business relationships are built on trust and honesty. Being trustworthy as a farmer. Because the consequences of our actions are very diverse. You might say that I'm just side marketing this one bell, but you are disrupting an entire value chain because of your actions. On that note, viewers, we're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you, viewers, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness. We are in the third and final segment of your program. I am with the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Farmers Union, Mr. Paul Zagaria. Mr. Zagaria, we are in the third and final segment. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Earlier on, before we went to the break, we're talking of respecting contractual agreements as farmers and the effects that our actions of side marketing might have on the value chain. Now, as we move right along, I want us to touch a bit on the winter wheat, uh, on the winter wheat production season that we are in at the moment. Your advice, your recommendations, aligning it to the rehabilitation of our irrigation systems here in Zimbabwe. Mm. So the season is, uh, is already on us. And uh, I must say that um, the, our farmers, the farmers that, uh, that we interact with on a daily basis, they actually set. Some of them have uh, already planted. And uh, those who have delayed they are finalizing their land preparation and so on. Of the 60,000 hectares that's going to be supported by the agro yield scheme, that has already, the inputs have, a uh, greater part of the inputs, they have actually been distributed and uh, the f very few that were remaining are still collecting. But uh, we are still within the window, uh, the planting window. And then uh, we also know that the private sector is supporting around 15 to 20,000 hectares. And then uh, e the presidential scheme is also uh, taking up another 10,000 hectares. And we're looking at uh, around 85 or even upwards of 85,000 hectares. And uh, these uh, uh, the, the winter wheat, I think it has never been this well planned uh, in the past maybe yes. 20 or so years. So we are actually quite excited about the season and uh, we have also the assurance coming from uh, the Ministry of um, the Energy um, they have given the assurance that uh, the energy to pump our irrigation systems has actually been uh, hedged and ring fenced for wheat, and which is a very important uh, development. And then talk about the water, uh, water we have now in abundance, given also that uh, the rain season was excellent and our water bodies are actually quite um, generous. We do have quite a lot of water as we speak. So nothing stops us from um, going through our, our, our schemes, our irrigation schemes and producing the 85 or upwards of the 85,000 hectares and even get uh, quite a convincing yield out of that. Thank you so much, Say. The winter wheat uh, production season addressing issues surrounding import substitution in our country. Moving right along, we want to talk of the horticultural recovery and growth plan. We have issues in our economy such as unemployment of the youth. We have issues such as export growth, where we are saying that our horticultural industry has the potential you know, to bring in the much needed foreign currency if we do it properly. Your sentiments, your comments, your views, the opportunities that are coming with the horticultural recovery and growth plan. We, we have participating in the <clears throat> uh, thematic team on uh, horticultural development through the Horticultural Development Council. 
Mm. We now have a council that is looking at horticulture in Zimbabwe and working closely for the exports with uh, Zim trade. So it is very important. It's a very important subject to us. Now, what does it mean? It is tied up again with the very same you know, issue that we have just finished talking about the irrigation, development of irrigation. Horticulture is about producing uh, you know, high value crops that access good markets locally and, uh, and, and, and offshore, right? So it requires us to have good access to water, excellent access to mechanized production, here the irrigation things that we are talking about, but also the standards. We need to meet certain standards for the local market and for the export market. Yes. So it is critical that our farmers begin now to normalize, you know, accessing information, even if it means uh, going to a short course here, a conference there, and meeting with other farmers to discuss the challenges around horticulture. We need to uh, broaden the, 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 the ranges of what we are producing because the markets are there, they are awash. But look at what, ha what is happening amongst ourselves. When we talk about horticulture, everybody wants to grow tomatoes. Everybody wants to grow cabbages, cabbages because these are cheaper and easy to produce. But then cheap things are not always that cheap. You will see that the market uh, is flood and then eventually uh, we are losing uh, the, the product itself, the value actually out of that product. So it is critical that we understand what is happening. Zim Trade has a lot of information on what to produce for export markets. And also the local markets, we have a lot of information on various platforms that are sharing market information on high value crops that can actually be sold locally in our supermarkets, in our mass markets, in our traditional markets, and many other places that have been opened up. We now have weekend uh, farmers markets and they are actually providing an opportunity for us to, to sell. So producing and producing the right type of uh, you know, uh, uh, product, good quality product, and the right volumes. So the volumes will determine whether the price is going to, uh, uh, we are going to flood the market or not. So that market intelligence is very, very critical. Thank you so much, Say. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of this week's edition. As we round off in a, a snippet, I understand that you work closely with the youth and you at times uh, are regarded as their mentor when it comes to issues surrounding agriculture. Your recommendations and word of advice to our farming community focusing on the youth because we have issues such as unemployment. What are your sentiments? Your recommendations, your word of advice and encouragement as we head towards the Civil Vision 2030 as a country. That's another very exciting space, you know, that we are working in. Our young people, what is exciting about that is young people are getting interested in agriculture, in farming. And what I'm noticing about young people is they are not producing for the sake of producing. They have this idea of starting from the markets and then working their way backwards. So we have highly qualified young people who are seeing uh, opportunities for, for employability in agriculture. Challenges are there, and my word of advice definitely is, agriculture is not a walk in the park. You will fail, but keep rising back again and fail some more because it is through these failures that we perfect the art. And many of these farms that we saw in the past, you know, flourishing, they flourished because of failure. They failed, but then they kept on it and they continued. So we need to, you know, continue to put our all in it. And it is not, like I said, it's not an easy task. It is hard work, but it pays. Thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you so much, Wazanai. There you had it, viewers. I was with the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Farmers Union, Mr. Paul Zakaria. This episode was just a look at the farming business environment here in Zimbabwe. Now, as we rounded off, Mr. Zakaria here was saying, 
farming for the youth or anyone if in farming you would understand that it is not a walk in the park you are going to fail but it is from those failures that we start to perfect our art and we are good at what we do for me your host was Wazanae Manyore I'm also on Instagram it's a W Manyore and Daniel Mrangan have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching.